thought I'd do a video showing you this cargo bike. Is it something I put together? Oh, years ago. When I was riding to work, I like to take my bike, but I also like to take my dog. She was kind of the, uh, the shop dog. And well, the commute was a little bit far for her to run next to me. It was a little bit over four miles. And well, I figured she could run part of the way and then hop in like she is now and uh, ride uh, the rest of the way to work. That's what we did. So this was my commuter when I did bring Penny for years. And it has many, many miles on it. It's a beautiful day. Good day to be out on a bike. Isn't that right, Penny? What do you say we take it back to the shop and take a look at it? Let's do that. All right, back in the shop. Whew, I was a little winded on that. I apologize. I guess I got to work out a little bit more. But anyway, here we are with the cargo bike. Now, if you're watching this video, you're probably just watching uh, to see a cargo bike or you're building one yourself. And uh, let me show you how I uh, designed this and put this together. Uh, this back part from this piece back is all Schwinn tandem. And what that gives you, or gave me, is I have a top tube, kind of a mid tube, and this other tube that goes all the way up front. Plus I have three stays. I have a seat stay, a chain stay, and we'll call that a middle stay. So the frame is very, very sturdy, and it gives me a nice spot right here to weld to. Well, if you get an older bike, you're gonna to need to adapt the bottom bracket. There's an adapter that goes in there that goes from that real big bearing to the kind of standard square taper on this one, uh, bottom bracket. Uh, so you can put that in there. The drivetrain I'm using is an eight on the back, eight speed, three on the front. Uh, trigger shifts on the handlebars there. So basically a mountain bike drivetrain. Um, I've modified the brakes. All right, so here on the back of the bike, I have the rear brake. The frame did not come equipped to accept a disc brake. So this mount I had to weld on. Um, it was originally equipped with a big drum brake here and there's a tab sticking down and that's, that's what would stop, but I didn't want to use that. So I welded on this tab to run a standard uh, mountain bike disc brake. I think that's a 180 on there with a hydraulic, uh, hydraulic caliper there. And all of the bike components that I'm using are all Shimano. So that's an Olivio on the back, uh, kind of your standard mountain bike crank. And then these pedals right here, I really like. They are one-sided SPDs, which you can see here. And then you flip them over and they are flat. And they're nice if I want to be clipped in, I can. So I get a little bit more power. But let's say I'm carrying something really heavy and I'm not entirely sure I want to be clipped in. I can use just flats, reg regular sneakers, and, uh, and go that way. So I can put my foot down a little quicker. This cargo area that I made is three feet long, two feet wide. Now, if you're making your own, you can kind of make it any, any size you want, but I figured this was a good uh, kind of a medium size. Um, I didn't want it to be too heavy. So what I did is I made this container just full of holes. So it's built, um, there's a support there with a hole and then a bunch of gusseting and stuff. The reason I did that as opposed to just a flat piece of wood is when Penny was sitting there, I didn't want her sliding out. When I had stuff in there, I didn't want it falling out, but I wanted it super light. So this whole cargo area, this whole plywood box uh, weighs about 10 pounds. So that's not too bad. That was my, my weight budget for the cargo area was 10 pounds, but it's just made out of real thin quarter inch plywood uh, that I shaped and then just put a, a coat of everything on it and called it done. And it does very well because when I have this loaded up, uh, I have Penny in there. Penny is about 55 pounds and this, uh, the cargo bike by itself naked is about 65 pounds. So, um, so that's quite a bit of weight uh, pedaling along and it, it goes up hills uh, okay. 
uh, but that's that's on me and I have it decked out with my two paneer bags my rear rack bag so I got all kinds of storage so what this has on it is hydraulic steering and so if I Turn the wheel, the front wheel turns, which is exactly what you want. But the way that works is there's a hydraulic cylinder here, and there's another one connected underneath. And if you want to kind of learn more of how that works and how I did it, I'm going to put a link, should be right here. Uh, click on that, and I'll do a video of exactly how that works. But essentially, it's just two pneumatic cylinders that are connected uh, with some automatic transmission fluid. I have it flipped on its side here, and you can see the frame. Let me show you back here. This piece right here, that is the tandem piece that I was talking about before. And so I've added this, which is the gusset, and then from this seam forward, all of this I've added. So I got my two cross members right here to hold my cargo box on there. There's a gusset right here, another one right there, and then one tube comes up to another gusset right there. And then on this, you can see I have a hydraulic cylinder there and another one there that, uh, that acts as my steering. Uh, but you can see it's a very lightweight, very strong structure right here that holds the uh, kind of the front and the back of the bike together. So anyway, I hope you liked the video of my cargo bike here. It's a little bit different video. I'm not fixing or machining or doing anything like that, but uh, I figured I'd show you a project that I have done. Uh, if you do have any questions, leave a comment and I will get to them. I can, uh, hopefully I've answered most of them in this video. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you watching and uh, thank you very much.